My name is David DeLuca. I'm a senior storage solutions architect at Amazon Web Services. I'm here to talk about the native data protection features in Amazon S3, including versioning, object lock, and replication. We'll walk through a brief overview of each and discuss how these features can help you meet your data protection goals. Let's get started. Amazon S3 is an object storage surface that offers industry-leading scalability, availability, durability, security, and performance. S3 provides management features so you can optimize, organize, and configure access to your data to meet your specific business, organizational, and compliance requirements. Customers of all sizes and industries can use S3 to store and protect any amount of data for a range of use cases. Today, millions of AWS customers store exabytes of data in over 280 trillion objects. S3 is highly resilient and durable by default. This refers to the ability to retain your data without fear of data loss. S3 offers 11 nines of durability by redundantly storing your objects on multiple devices across a minimum of three availability zones in an AWS region. So you're probably wondering, if S3 is already secure and durable, why do we need to enlist additional data protection services? There are several factors that you should take into account when defining a data protection strategy. These include human error, such as accidental deletion or overwriting of data, malicious activity, such as ransomware and cyber attacks, and disruptions which may affect an entire AWS region. Let's take a look at the S3 features that can help mitigate these risks. We'll start by talking about S3 versioning which serves as the foundation for S3 data protection. S3 versioning is a means of keeping multiple variants of an object in the same bucket. This allows you to recover more easily from both unintended user actions as well as application failures. Versioning is deployed at the bucket level with a simple enable command from the AWS console, CLI, or SDK. In this graphic, we see that there are two versions of an object called cat.jpg, and a third copy of that object is being uploaded. With versioning enabled, all versions of the object are retained. If versioning was not enabled, this upload would have overwritten the prior object. Versioning can help you recover objects from accidental deletion or overwrites. If you attempt to delete an object, S3 inserts a delete marker instead of removing the object permanently. And you can always restore the previous version of an object. To manage your objects so they are stored cost efficiently, you can define a lifecycle configuration. This allows you to transition objects to a different S3 storage class or expire them a certain number of days after they become the non-current version. Next, let's talk about how to protect your data from malicious activity using S3 Object Lock. S3 Object Lock has become the industry standard for immutable storage. It allows you to enforce a write once, read many, or worm policy. You can use it to add a layer of protection against object overwrites and deletions, particularly against ransomware threats or other malicious activity. It can also help you meet regulatory requirements. S3 Object Lock is enabled at the bucket level. Once it's enabled, you can specify retention settings on individual objects upon upload. You also have the option of setting a default object lock policy on the bucket, which will apply to all new objects unless you explicitly specify different retention settings during upload. Object Lock offers two retention modes. In governance mode, users can't overwrite or delete an object or alter its lock settings unless they have special permissions to do so. In compliance mode, a protected object can't be overwritten or deleted by any user, including the root user in your AWS account. Both modes require you to specify a retention period, which can be as short as one day or as long as 99 years. You can also place a legal hold on an object which prevents it from being overwritten or deleted until the hold is explicitly removed. Object Lock integrates with other S3 data protection features. Versioning must be enabled on the bucket, and Object Lock settings are applied to specific object versions. Lifecycle configurations continue to function normally on protected objects, with one notable exception. A lifecycle configuration will not be permitted to permanently delete an object version while it's being protected by Object Lock. Replication can be used to copy objects to another S3 bucket while retaining their retention metadata. Which brings us to our next topic, S3 replication, which enables automatic, asynchronous copying of objects across S3 buckets. As I mentioned before, Amazon S3 stores your data across multiple availability zones within an AWS region by default, 
So why would you consider storing your data in multiple AWS regions? Well, you may have a compliance requirement to store a secondary copy of your data hundreds of miles away from the source. You can also increase performance and minimize latency for customers or end users that are distributed across geographic locations by maintaining multiple object copies in AWS regions that are closer to those users. For the sake of our data protection conversation, let's focus on operational resiliency. S3 replication can be used to store an additional copy of your data in a separate AWS region to allow continued data access in the unlikely event of a regional disruption. S3 replication allows you to replicate an entire bucket or a subset of the bucket based on prefix or object tags. The object metadata is retained, including version ID and object lock retention settings. When you enable replication, it will only apply to new objects added to your bucket. However, you can use S3 batch operations to replicate any existing objects that were added to the bucket prior to the replication rules being configured. Replication also allows you to change the ownership of the replica to a different AWS account. This can be used as another means of protecting data against malicious activity. Lastly, you can optimize your storage costs by replicating objects into a different storage class, such as Glacier Flexible Retrieval or Glacier Deep Archive at the destination. You can also replicate your data to the same storage class and then use an S3 lifecycle configuration at the destination to move your objects to more cost-effective storage over time. Finally, let's take a look at how you can use S3 Storage Lens to gain visibility into your S3 data protection status. S3 Storage Lens provides an interactive dashboard built into the S3 console that is automatically configured for all customers. It provides an organization-wide view of S3 storage across all of your accounts and buckets. Many metrics are included free of charge, as well as an optional paid tier of advanced metrics and recommendations. Within the free and advanced tiers, S3 Storage Lens metrics are organized into categories that align with key use cases, including data protection. Here's a quick look at some of the data protection metrics that are available in S3 Storage Lens. These include versioning, object lock, and replication. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned some useful tips on how to protect your data using Amazon S3. For more information, please visit the Amazon S3 website.